stutters and lots of pains. We have four speakers. The first speaker before us is uh, Dr. G.K. Prabhu, president of Manipal University. Uh, he did his M.Tech from Manipal Institute of Technology. Joined uh, the institution in 1994. Uh, that is his first rank he got in MIT. But he has been serving the university for the past 35 years, as from lecturer to pro vice chancellor, and now the president of the university. Uh, he is a person who is uh, innovative in techno, in uh, methodologies of teaching, research, and has contributed significantly to the promotion of knowledge in various areas. He is a great administrator and a scholar. We call them ECA administrators, academic administrators. He got the coveted Shri Shamla Saxena Memorial Award from National Academy of Medical Sciences in 2007, the most important award, which is bestowed upon people who have done considerable work in the field of medical sciences. And it is sim simply believable that under his leadership, his university has not only got high ranking, but has made a great contribution. Sir, starting with you, Dr. Prabhu. Uh, tell us, what is so distinctive about your university? Aapke vishwadhyalaya ka naam kyo hai? Mein to jab jata hoon, to lagta hai, I'm jase Washington DC mein aagya hoon, building hai dekhkar ko. Par khas baat kya hai? Okay. This name is Manipal University. Manipal is actually a place in the southern part of Karnataka, in the banks of an Arabian Sea. And although we have about uh, 70 years of an existence as a, an institution, the first medical college under the, the private sector was started uh, in Manipal in way back in 1953. Although we have a multiple campuses, the Manipal University Jaipur is established in uh, 2011, started with the 300 students and Today, we have about 16,000 students in the campus, and another vertical on the online education, we have about uh, 50,000. Now, the questions that you said, sir, what is so important and what is that so distinctive? I want my university to be a human. It is not a set of buildings. So it means that when we look for and human beings, because it is not a factory, or a manufacturing unit. Basically, we are dealing with the young students. The another important stakeholders for us is a faculty. Since we are dealing with the a human beings, I want my university to be perceived or seen or an experienced as a human. When we see that, of course, now it manifested in many things, whether it is a design of the curriculum, how we engage the students both inside and outside the classrooms. How do we communicate to the community? That is also is very important. It is not only that we are teaching, learning, creating new ideas, which is basically is a research. One is decimation of the knowledge, which is teaching, learning, creation of the new knowledge, which is basically research. And the third part is very important that the university must connect to the community. And this is where I would see the distinct feature of my university is to be seen as a human and Good. then ultimate multiple efforts what we are making. Okay, so to, 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 it is not only saying, but also the people must experience that. I'll stop it here, sir. For your thing. Dr. Prabhu, what we see in newspapers generally when we look at the rankings of Indian universities and colleges, we feel very disappointed because hardly two or three institutions really emerge in the first 400 or 500. And one IIT or one maybe Bangalore Institute of C.V. Raman, they figure. Why is it so that we have, we, or even our best is not good enough in international standards? Yeah, so one, uh, yes. Many universities initially only the, the premier institutions in the engineering, let us say IITs, in the management IAMs, they are figuring in the, the top rankings. They have their distinct uh, advantages. But I am off late, we are so happy 
that the private organization, the universities are also making their own footprint in this particular journey. But to, to be there on this uh, footprint, sir, there are many multiple factors. The important thing is the quality of education. And this will come through a quality of faculty members. Second one, to be there on the ranking is the important thing is the research and the innovation. Excuse me, why the best of the minds don't come to universities as faculty? They go for private sector, MNCs, other jobs, or civil services, but why don't they come to institutions like yours as faculty? Why it's only number two or number three choice? Okay, uh, good question. One is the ecosystems that we have. So the regulatory concept that we have it, see for example, to grow in the academic institutions, it is not only undergraduate is sufficient. We need to have a post-graduation. After a particular level, it is in research. By the same time, if the same person, he goes for an industry, so I think uh, the ladder for him is uh, slightly much bigger. So more and more challenging, more and more empowerment. So these are uh, the important things to for an individual to take that kind of uh, uh, a job. But off late, sir, I am very happy that uh, slowly the teaching profession is also becoming number one. So people are looking for it. Initially, they were thinking that the teaching is an easy job. That is why I take it, but no more. It is a more challenging, more stressful too, because the expectations of the students and engaging the, the new generation students is not that easy. The teacher's main quality today that we have, it is a continuous learning. If the, any person, if you start learning and if you think that I have something that I have learned, that is the only the thing that I'll teach it, I think that teacher or a person will become obsolete. Very good. A good thing about him and his institution